One of the best ways to tell if a knife is sharp is a tomato test. We're gonna see how easily this cuts the tomato. Should just be able to pull the knife across and it start the cut. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to sharpen your knife with whetstone. So this kit comes with three stones. This first stone is a 400 grit and then a 1,000 grit. 400 is the roughest grit that you're gonna have in this set, and the 1,000 is less rough. So the 400 grit is gonna start you off. That's where you're setting the bevel when you're sharpening with the whetstone. So this second stone has a 3,000 grit and an 8,000 grit. The 3,000 is gonna take the blade from this process to this, and then the 8,000 is just gonna buff and finish the edge. It's gonna leave you with a very clean knife, very sharp, and ready to use. This is a stone flattener. This conditions the face of the stone. People use this to make these last longer. Once you're ready to sharpen, let's talk about the water that you're gonna need. It speeds up the process and it helps the stone sharpen the blade. I like using water because it's food safe. We're gonna start with adding water to our stone. And I'm just pulling it over with my hand until the stone soaks it up. What I'm looking for is for the, the water to beat up on the stone. As you can see where it, I started adding water, it's staying there longer. The next part is I have to find the bevel of the blade. Take a penny, put it down, Take your knife, put the back end down on the penny, and the front edge on the stone. Now that we've found the angle, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start drawing the blade towards us, pulling, not just straight down, but pulling all the length of the blade through the stone. When I'm doing that, I'm making sure that my fingers stay on the blade. If they're on the blade, they can't get cut. You will see my hand work its way down, or you will see my fingers resting on here to feel that knife through the pull. Getting the whole knife through the stone, and what that's doing is taking the rough bits and edges off of the blade. However many you do on this side, I'm going to do on this side. So I don't want to have one side really angled and the other side straight up and down. I definitely want equal sides. So if I did 10 poles on this side, I'll do 10 poles on the other side. If your knife is pretty dull, you're probably gonna wanna do 20 poles. What you're looking for is a blade that is clean, one that doesn't have any chips or gouges out of the blade. You're gonna determine that just by sight. So I can tell that this side is done. I need to go to the other side, so I'm going to move my penny down here and keep the angle that I started, feel for the bevel and work up. And you're just taking the edge and the cracks out of that blade. So that's about 20 pulls on both sides. You can feel that the knife is ready. There are no major cracks, no major gouges. So if you look in the water, what you're seeing here is the pieces of steel the pieces of the knife coming off and helping you sharpen this blade. It's working in conjunction with the stone, but it's pretty cool. I've just flipped the stone to the thousand grit side. What this side will do is just get more scratches out, but it's really starting to push that steel into an edge and form a ribbon of steel that will lean one way or the other. That's your edge. And so that's what we're refining here. So I'm gonna add water until it puddles on the stone. I'm gonna add my penny back right where it was to keep that bevel where it needs to be. Lay the blade down and start the same process over with the pulls. With the thousand grit, I'm not gonna need that much. Maybe 10 pulls because we're moving to that finer edge. We're not moving as much steel as we had and the grain is getting smaller in the abrasive. So it's done on this side. I'm gonna move my penny to go back to start with the other side. 
Remember, you don't need to put a lot of pressure. Just let the stone do the work. The last side I did 10 pulls. So this side, we're gonna do 10 pulls. Once again, you see the slurry on the stone, so you know the blade's getting sharp. So I've just finished sharpening the blade on both sides with the 1000 grit. We're done with this stone. We're gonna to move to the second stone to finish the sharpening process. Same as before, we're gonna take water, add it to the stone, and what we're looking for is for the water to bubble on top of the stone. Take my penny, my knife will go down just like it did before, back of the blade, the spine on the penny, edge on the stone, and continue just like before. As you need to, you're gonna to need to add water. You'll see it dry out. This stone is a lot smoother so I'm not gonna need as many pulls. Still minimal pressure, just moving that knife through the stone. And I'm gonna to switch to the other side. Moving my penny. So I'm done with this side. I've done about five pulls each side. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna flip the stone to the 8,000 grit and just finish it off and try and get that mirror polish to get the perfect edge. Minimal effort, pulling through the stone. Just about five pulls will be perfect. I'm gonna switch sides. So I'm taking my penny, put it over here. So I did five pulls each side. This knife is sharp. Let's do a quick test. A sharp knife is a safe knife. If you're using a lot of pressure, what you're cutting could slip or the knife could slip and possibly hurt you. We're gonna see how easily this cuts the tomato. Should just be able to pull the knife across and it start the cut. So I'm gonna hold my tomato and just effortlessly pull and it effortlessly cut the slice off the tomato. This knife is ready to cook with. I really enjoyed showing you how to sharpen a knife with a whetstone today. Again, my name is Sergio with Texas Sage Forge. I'll see you next time. <laughs>